So today we're here with Brian Rothrock. Brian, who are your parents? Uh, my dad was Dwight and my mother was Dorothy Rothrock. Did you have any brothers and sisters? Please name them. Yep. Uh, Ron is my oldest. Uh, Jim was next. Uh, he recently passed away. And my sister, Linda. Did sports play a role in your family? Absolutely. Where and what year did you graduate from high school? Uh, I went to Sturts at Strasburg, and I graduated in 1975. What sports did you play in high school? Uh, baseball and basketball. Talk about your high school sports career from your, high, from your freshman to senior year. Uh, my freshman year was just kind of getting established in high school. Uh, you're, you know, you're a freshman, so uh, you're learning the ropes, uh, learning from the older guys, stuff like that. So, so we had a pretty good freshman, uh, sophomore class, and uh, so our JV team was pretty good. Uh, and then my junior year, uh, things started to pick up. I was, I started starting varsity uh, at the end of my sophomore year, and then. Uh, my junior year, I was a complete starter, uh, and we had a ranked team that year. Uh, uh, matter of fact, in that conference, there was probably three teams who were ranked in uh, Class A. There was two classes at that time. Uh, and then my senior year, uh, we were also ranked, uh, and each, each year, the, my junior year, we went to the super sectional Played Sarah Gordo in the super sectional uh, and unfortunately lost. My, my senior year, uh, we were actually picked to go back to the super sectional and ended up losing in the sectional final. Wow. Talk about some of the teammates and coaches you had. Uh, coaches, uh, I had Monty Norn who is very well known around the state, I believe, as a great high school coach. We learned uh, a lot of the game of basketball from, from Monty. Uh, he taught lots of fundamentals. He taught play as a team, and uh, that's pretty much what we did. Uh, some of the players, you know, when you start naming names, you hate to do that because you forget somebody. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, in my junior year uh, with that ranked team, I can remember guys like uh, Kevin Pickish, uh, Bruce Kryle. Uh, we had uh, Eddie, Eddie Renshaw, John Wittersheim, uh, myself, and uh, Dana Anderson was a sophomore that year, so he was on that team. Talk about some of the teams and players that you played against in high school. Um, boy, there's there's just so many. Obviously, T-Town hat was loaded almost every year. So I remember, uh, you know, playing against, uh, there was Bart Fudemans and uh, there was Dieters and uh, uh, Mark Craig. He, he was a standout that year. Um, so, and then St. Anthony had, uh, they had, they were ranked number one my junior year. And uh, they had a uh, Haney kid. Uh, boy, I can't remember all of Cabas. I'm sure there was some Cabas mm -hmm. on that team. Uh, and so it was just a great time to be playing in the National Trail Conference. Uh, every game that you played in that conference, it seemed like it was a packed house. What were your favorite ball fields and gyms in high school? Uh, well, obviously ours, because uh, we we never lost at home very much at all. So, especially those last two years. Um, so, it was basically my favorite place to play. But uh, I did, I enjoyed going to St. Anthony because it, it was, a, you know, kind of a, uh, a you're just packed in there. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it, the excitement level was really high. T-Town was a great. I'll tell you that probably one of my favorites, though, uh, during that time was the National Trail Con uh, Conference Tournament. And when we played in Aldemont, uh, Aldemont had such a nice, you know, it had a circular gym uh, for, for the uh, people to come watch the games and that. So... Uh, you know, it was a fun place to play, too. And any stories you'd like to share during your high school career? Uh, boy, 
boy, there's so many. But, uh, you know, probably the one that stands out is uh, one of my uh, all-time wanted to do was go to a state tournament. And uh, so it was probably the game against Cerro Gordo uh, when we played in super sectional. Uh, it was a back and forth game. Um, and we were actually in the fourth quarter ahead. Uh, but one of our guys got into foul trouble and we just had no answer for Mark Mall, who was an all-stater that year. So, uh, you know, but, uh, and there was many others tournaments. Uh, we, we played in the Mattoon Holiday Tournament back then. So there were, we played against some large schools, played against some Chicago schools. For a school that was only two, uh, you know, 200, uh, that was that was pretty good for us. Did you get? Did you receive any awards in high school? Uh, actually, I was the uh, named uh, Player of the Year, uh, Herald and Review Player of the Year my senior year, uh, and I was uh, voted most valuable player on our high school team. After high school, did you go to college? Uh, I played one year of. Uh, basketball at Lakeland College. Uh, it was in between playing baseball and uh, so I actually in high school I signed out of uh, high school to play with the Minnesota Twins and um, after my first year of rookie ball I came back and went to Lakeland and played one year of college. Who recruited you? Uh, his, the man's name was Elworth Brown uh, he's the same scout who, uh, oh, you're saying basketball, sorry. Uh, it was Chuck Bell, actually. He was the coach of Lakeland at that time. He had left St. Anthony, uh, and he, he actually recruited me to Valparaiso because he was the assistant coach there, and then uh, he he left Valparaiso and got the head coaching job at uh, junior college at Lakeland. And uh, he, he recruited me to there. At college, talk about your career, including your teammates and your coaches. Um, we actually had uh, probably one of the better teams in the area in uh, junior college. Uh, we had some guys that uh, one of the guards ended up going on to the U of I and played for two more years. Uh, our big guy ended up leaving, and uh, Doug Jemison, he was, uh, he was six seven center, and excellent player. He ended up going on to the University of San Francisco. Um, I was able to start as a guard on that team. I, I believe there was also uh, Phil Wendling. He was from Effingham. He was a guard on that team. Um, and there was a couple other area guys that's just escaping me in there at the moment. <laughs> and any stories you'd like to share during your college career? Um, yeah, I, uh, our, my, when we got into the uh, regionals and the state tournament, we ended up winning the state tournament, which sent you on to the nationals, which is in Hutchison, Kansas. And since I was the starting guard on that team, I really wanted to go. But at the time, I was under contract under the Minnesota Twins. So I thought I'd be smart. And I had gotten my papers to uh, go to spring training. And it was at the same time that we were leaving to go to Hutchison, Kansas to play in the JC tournament. And I, I ended up making the mistake of calling up Minnesota and asking if it would be all right if we would, if I could go and play in this tournament, then I would report down to spring training after that was done. And so they said, why, well, sure, you can go do that if you'd like, but don't bother coming down to uh, spring training. And I turned around and said, well, okay, I'll see you in, I'll see you in the next day or so. <laughs> so, <laughs> so needless to say, I, I wasn't able to go to the tournament, um, which I wish I could have. We ended up, I think, finishing third, third or fourth that year uh, out of eight teams in the Nationals. Um, but I, my career was baseball, so 
I, I left and went down there. So describe the process. Were you drafted? Did you attend a tryout for baseball? How did that all work? Yeah, I was undrafted. Um, I was beginning my, uh, I had just graduated and was going to play summer um, Legion ball uh, with the guys that I've been playing with all, all these years. And uh, ended up, I got called and got invited to St. Charles, Missouri, where El Ellsworth Brown was at. And uh, he wanted me to come down and take a look. And he, that same day we went down, um, had a, you know, excellent tryout. There's all kinds of college guys there and stuff like that. And um, he wanted to sign me on the spot. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> I'm, I'm in. So I did. Um, and uh, he, he gave me travel papers and uh, this is where you'll report and, and, from there, I just I hopped on a plane and went. So name the scout, the team, and the year. Uh, Ells Ellsworth Brown. Uh, it was uh, the summer of '76, uh, or the yeah the beginning of the summer. Um, and the team was uh, it was rookie league, so it was uh, uh, Elizabeth in Tennessee. So what position did you play? I was a pitcher. So talk about your minor league experiences. What levels and what locations and what leagues did you did you attend? Uh, the first year uh, was rookie league. Uh, they just they break you in. So basically, it's a three month period. It's not a full season. Uh, and I ended up uh, I was basically in a reliever's role at that at there, and uh, I ended up lead in the league and earn a run average as as a reliever and that so the next year they sent me to uh, Wisconsin Rapids and uh, this was about the transition when twins were getting rid of their head uh, their the manager of the big league and uh, they were in process of appointing a new head coach and some management changes. Uh, I had a really good year at uh, A-Ball, at Midwest League is what it's called. And uh, I was in Wisconsin Rapids. Uh, Danville was still a part of that at that time. They were the Dodgers. You had Burlington, you had uh, Dubuque, Iowa, Quad Cities, Cedar Rapids. Uh, Waterloo, I think, and a couple other, uh, Appleton. Mm -hmm. And uh, <clears throat> I ended up, I was eight and four, lower and run average as a starter. Um, and Harry Warner was our manager, and he was actually up for appointment as uh, head, the head manager for the big team. <laughs> Uh, unfortunately, he didn't get it, but because uh, I had a good feeling with him and a good repertoire with him. So, uh, you know, if that could have happened, it might have worked out a little better. But uh, anyway, they sent me to winter ball that year. And if you get sent to winter ball after a good year like that, you're normally, when it rolls back around to spring training, you're, you're going to get, you know, looked at. So I ended up my final year, I, I was having some arm issues, and uh, but I worked through it, and I got invited to the AAA club, and uh, in spring training, and was doing okay, but they pretty much had their roster filled, and they wanted me to work out some issues with my arm, so they sent me to Double A which is on, in Orlando, and the uh, manager of that team was Johnny Goral, who he, after a few years left the Twins, and he was the bench coach for the Cleveland Indians when they won the World Series. Hmm. Well, for some reason, Johnny really didn't want me on his roster. He had already had his roster made out. So needless to say, the first few weeks that when we broke camp and the game started, I basically sat sad. Uh, he wouldn't pitch me. Um, basically, I was a mop-up role. And so the arm got worse, basically, is what happened. Uh, just going in, wasn't prepared when I'd go in and, and hurt my arm a little more. So to, to work that out, they ended up 
sending me to Wisconsin, back to Wisconsin Rapids to work it out. Well, they had knew that I had played some uh, field and hit well in high school, so they gave me an opportunity to start uh, doing that. And uh, we were a DH as as soon as I got into the minor leagues. That's basically when DH started. So I never I hadn't hit for a couple of years, so that was slow going. The, the defense wasn't bad. I played the outfield and it, it was fine, but. Uh, just, you know, I was having a hard time catching up, and I, and I really wanted to go as a pitcher, and needless to say, you know, being young and being not patient, <laughs> I just decided to call it quits because I, I didn't think my arm was ever going to get any better, so I left. Talk about your minor league career as far as your stats. Uh, well, like I say, that my first year in rookie league, uh, I – led the league in earn run mm -hmm. averages as, as a reliever and that, and uh, uh, did real well there. Um, and then in A-ball, Wisconsin Rapids, I had an 8-4 uh, record and a uh, yeah, good earn run average. And, uh, you know, I thought that would carry me over, but with the arm problems, it, it just, it kind of went south from there. Talk about some of the teams and players that you got to play against. Uh, yeah, there's a Clint Hurdle. Uh, wow. Clint, Clint Hurdle was with the Royals organization at that time. I pitched against him. Um, Harold Baines was with the White Sox at that time uh, in Appleton. Uh, pitched against him and that. Uh, Pedro Guerrero was in the Dodgers organization, so he was in Danville for a little while. So, yeah, I, I got to play against some guys that really uh, did well in, in the bigs. Name some of your favorite ball fields. Um, I would say Orlando has to be one of them just because everything is, uh, you know, the, the field and everything is so pristine down there. And the, the backdrop was, uh, at that time, was called the Tangerine Bowl, <laughs> which I'm not sure what they call it now, but it, it you know, huge football stadium. And it, it's uh, actually seen one take, uh, a guy hit one off the top of the uh, into that bowl, which is a massive shot. But, wow! Uh, um, that 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 one was really nice. Uh, our our Wisconsin Rapids field was super nice. It had uh, it had some nice backdrop in it. Uh, uh, in Double A, when we played in Chattanooga, it, just because Babe Ruth had played there. And what's amazing about their stadium there in Chattanooga was straightaway center field, the light standards were inside the field because it was about a 450 shot to hit a home run in that field. And when you get to the base of the wall, the, the ground just actually slants up to the fence because, you know, it, it's really hard to hit a home run. But... I was one game before we played, there was an old gentleman that came to every game, I'm assuming, you know, he's always there. And he was sitting in the stands and he wanted to talk a little bit. And he was like, yeah, I remember Babe playing here. And uh, he hit he hit one, you know, past the 450 <laughs> mark, halfway up the light standard, all, you know. So it, it, there was some nostalgia there with that. So it, it's, you know, it's kind of nice to hear those kind of stories and stuff. Did your family attend any of your games? Yeah, uh, my only game that my father was able to see, or my parents was able to see, was when we played in Danville. And as luck would have it, I was the pitcher that night and uh, had a super great game. And uh, so I, it was you know, kind of a proud moment for me and a lot of friends, a lot of friends mm -hmm. and family came up and uh, got to see that game. So it was, uh, yeah, it was really nice. And any other stories you'd like to add during your minor league career? Um, no, but uh, to finish out, I guess about my family, uh, I had an uncle that played for the Cubs, mm -hmm. um, Daryl, he he's he was from 
or he played in Cedar Rapids. He got called up for about a week with the Chicago Cubs. And then I had another uncle that uh, spent some minor league time in, uh, with the Washington Centers back in the day. He was a left-handed pitcher too. Both my uncles were left-handed. I don't know what happened to me. I ended up being right-handed. <laughs> um, but the story goes back uh, when the Cardinals were in, the, I can't remember which World Series it was, but one of my great, great, great uncles Jack Rothrock, who played for the Cardinals back in the Gas House Gang times, uh, was a trivia question on a World Series game, and I was actually watching the game at the time. But it, the, the question was, uh, Jose Aquindo had played every position for the Cardinals that year uh, and when they got to the World Series. And the question was, who was the last Cardinal player to play every position for the St. Louis Cardinals uh, until Jose Aquindo did it. And the, and the answer popped up on TV and it was Jack Rothrock. Oh. So, uh, you know, that's, that was... Uh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, it was, uh, it was pretty neat. So after minor league baseball, how and where did you get started with fast pitch softball? Well, I came home and uh, started playing with, with the guys, uh, you know, Dana and... Uh, uh, Brad Freeze, um, you know, all the, that generation was playing with Tate's farm equipment, uh, Class A fast pitch, and I wanted to do something competitive still, and that, so I got involved with them, and uh, and had I played uh, two and a half, three years with them, and just had a blast, and I I just kind of fell in love with the game. Um, it, it was fast, it was quick, it was. Uh, you know, and I was having lots of success, so that always helps when, when things are happening. And uh, so I started with them and then uh, ended up getting seen by um, Decatur at that time was uh, 1980, was putting together a national competitive team and uh, got invited up to play on that. So I kind of transitioned from Tate's to Decatur. Mm -hmm. What position did you play? I was center fielder. So talk about your teammates and your coaches there. Uh, yeah, uh, you know, the first year was 1981. I moved up in 80 and then, and, and then started playing in 81. Pops Taylor, we called him Pops Taylor. Uh, he's kind of a legend in fast pitch. Uh, he was a pitcher back in the you know, 40s, 50s, somewhere in there, and uh, became a, a, a manager. And basically ADM brought him in to put together a team to be uh, you know, competitive in the national tournaments. And so he was the one that basically brought me up, uh, him and a guy named John Radloff, who, and he was from Strasburg, who was actually playing on that Decatur team at the time. And uh, so I came up, uh, and at the same time, they also brought in a pitcher that ended up being, you know, Hall of Famer was Dave Scott. They brought him in from Chinook Air, Air Force Base, where he was a pitcher, uh, you know, been pitching for two or three years as a young, you know, 17 year old or whatever. And then uh, they brought in a couple guys from Cedar Rapids. Uh, they're actually uh, Ted Hicks, who also was a Hall of Famer. Uh, and he uh, came from Cedar Rapids team. Uh, Daryl Day, they, they brought him in. Daryl was actually from Mount Zion, so it was an easy, it was an easy thing for him to uh, transition over to the Decatur team. Uh, and they, you know, they brought in Brent Stevenson here, uh, and then uh, Denny Place. They brought him in. He was from Wisconsin, so uh, he ended up being a Hall of Famer also. So me and Ted and Denny all went into the uh, ASA Hall of Fame at the mm. same time. Um, and then uh, to put together that team, then they, they mixed in some local people, which I was one of them. And then... Uh, uh, Rick Minton, who was a Decatur graduate athlete from MacArthur, 
Uh, he joined the team, I think, in 82 or 83. Steve Phillips, who uh, went to, uh, I think he was MacArthur too, actually. Uh, and uh, good athlete, good, just getting out of baseball. Uh, a lot of the guys were just getting out mm -hmm. of baseball and stuff. So what made that so good, that such a good run in the 80s with uh, the major men's fast pitch was you had uh, the older guys who were established, the Ty Stofflets, the Joe Lynches, the, uh, you know, the guys from Aurora, uh, Daryl Day, Bob Quinn, people like that was at the peak of their career and then you had the younger guys like me and Rick and you know Steve some some and all the other teams had that same uh, type of where you know you had the young and old and so it was so competitive it was so <laughs> an ASA national tournament might have 60 some teams in it and it's possible that 20 of them could really legitimately win the national tournament. And so we won, our first year, we won the ASA national tournament in uh, St. Joe, Missouri, which was quite an accomplishment just putting together that team in one year. Um, and then from there, I mean, we, we were in the uh, championship game probably four or five more times, you know, and ended up second you know, probably two or three times to Seattle, uh, once to Stratford, Connecticut. Um, and then we also, there's a uh, International Softball Congress, which is a different, uh, they allow a lot more stuff where uh, teams, ASA is more American. Uh, the ISC is more uh international mm -hmm. so you could have new zealand teams in it you could have canadian teams in it you could have, uh, in that so in 84 we were in allentown and ended up winning the uh, national tournament in the isc so talk about so we mentioned tates and adm um how many years did you play i i came up in 80 uh, 81 was my first year and then i ended up getting out in 89 uh, my kids were getting very involved in mm -hmm. uh, baseball and uh, basketball, and I just I felt like I wasn't there for them enough that I needed to be. So uh, I, I went ahead and got out in '89. So while playing, where else did you all travel? Uh, I've been to New Zealand three times. Wow. <laughs> um, we we went twice as a ADM team. We went over there. Uh, and then I also went as a, uh, it was called a Can-Am team, which is Canadian American. So they handpicked some American players to go and they handpicked some Canadian players. And this is when uh, New Zealand was preparing their national team for a, for a world tournament. So we went over and uh, that was a great experience. Why was men's fast with softball so strong in the eighties? Just like I say, I, I, I think you had uh, the uh, older uh, established guys that were at the peak of their games and you had so many good pitchers, you know, so many good American pitchers and that. And then New Zealand pitchers were wanting to come over and play both their summertime there and our summertime here. So you'd have some and then the Canadian players too, you'd have a few Canadian pitchers would drift in too. Uh, I, and then, you know, the athletes that were playing, uh, you're, you're talking about some really, really top-notch good athletes that was playing the game. So you mentioned the awards that you received, so is there any other stories you'd like to add? Yeah, I think uh, probably my the highlight of one of my highlights of my career would be in 88. Uh, they, we were trying to put together, the ASA was trying to put together a Olympic team and what they were doing, the men's and women's, and the Olympic committee decided uh, that they were only going to take the women. So, you know, as, as it happened, the, the, 
American women, the first year they had it, won the gold medal in the Olympics. The men were rejected and wasn't able to participate, but they also had what they called a uh, World Federation uh, Association or something like that, which basically that was the men's side of the Olympics. So every country had a team and uh, we, I was, blessed to be on the American team that year. And, uh, and basically it was handpicked, but also they, uh, they basically took the uh, first team All-Americans from the ASA Nationals, and I happened to be one of them. And uh, so we went up there, it was in Saskatoon, Canada, and it was, it was just a great experience. Uh, to play against all these different teams. I would say the four top teams were us, New Zealand, Canada, and Japan. Uh, but there was also some, you know, uh, Puerto, uh, the South Americans had some, Mexico had a really excellent team. Um, there were some others, but I, I'd say that we were at the forefront of possibly winning. Well, it, it, it came down to that. We came down, um, ended up, Play in New Zealand for the gold and ended up winning. So it, getting a gold, that was my gold medal. I always wanted to play in the Olympics. So that was it. Are you in touch with any of your former teammates? Uh, just the, just the ones that, yeah, played. We try to stay in contact with, uh, you know, whether text or, mm -hmm. or that, uh, not, I'm not much on phone calls and that type of <laughs> thing, but, and I know a lot of those guys do Facebook. Um, and unfortunately I'm not, but my wife usually keeps me <laughs> informed. If somebody's trying to get a hold of me Facebook wise, she'll let me know. So. At what age did you become interested in sports, Brian? Ever since I was little, ever since my mom always said that I basically came out with a ball in my hand. So yeah, <laughs> is what she always said. But, uh, my older, my older, uh, siblings kept me really interested. I, I remember going to my older brothers. They played in the 60s at Stusaraz. And uh, of course, Ken Canope was still the coach there. And, that, and uh, you know, he was Hall of Fame coach. So mm -hmm. we, we learned a lot of baseball from him. But I remember going to, uh, right, we lived right by the school. So I'd, I'd go over and watch them play. Since you played, how has the game changed? Um, well, for one thing, money. Uh, the, mm -hmm. the money is, it's such a big entertainment sport now, um, big business. Um, but otherwise, you know, I'd say as far as baseball goes, it, it's still baseball. I think uh, the, the guys train harder now. Um, and it's, it's almost a 365 day year training. Um, and they, they really work hard at it. What advice would you give to today's youth about playing sports? Don't give up, don't give up. And if you have big dreams, you know, you never know. Just, you know, a guy like me from a small town of 200 was <laughs> possibly, you know, a, a, an arm away from, you know, actually making it. So I would just say, you know, if you have big dreams, uh, you got to work your tail off, but it can be done. Who are some of your biggest role models? Uh, Bob Gibson. As, mm -hmm. as a pitcher, I always look to Bob Gibson. Uh, the, the thing he always said is, I own the plate. Mm -hmm. You don't. And I will make sure that you know that. <laughs> and for me, it 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 worked. It worked. I mean, I I had no fear of pitching in, pitching out, pitching up. You know, if somebody was wanting to get a little too close, I it wouldn't bother me at all to to buzz them. You know, <laughs> but, <laughs> but nowadays you can't do that, and and I understand that. Um, you know, got people throwing maybe few miles faster than what they used to and stuff. So it's somebody really getting hurt. But yeah, Gibson, uh, he was just the epitome of 
um, just grit and just wanting to win. You know, he, he was a winner, basically. Brian, in conclusion, what has sports done to change your life? Uh, you know, it really has shown me how to be, uh, to go and be, uh, just not ever give up on anything that I'm doing, um, to be organized. It taught me, you know, the two, I had a, a bunch of really, really good coaches that, uh, really showed me how to be organized and how to go about training and how to go about playing the game the right way and things like that. So um, I think it has taught me that, um, you know, otherwise it's just God gifted me with something and uh, I tried to use it for as long as I possibly could. And uh, unfortunately it didn't take me where I always dreamed of going, but I think I'm where I'm supposed to be, so. Brian, coming from a small town like Strasburg, not a lot of people get noticed like that. So I'm glad you're able to tell you, tell me your story. Good luck with your rest of your career and whatever you choose to do. And I wish you nothing but the best. Thank you. I appreciate that.